Police investigators have urged the public not to spread false information on social media or record searches as the search for Jocelyn Smith continues. The little girl went missing on the 19th of February after al allegedly being left in the care of her mother's boyfriend. Jakob van Skalkweg, owner and managing director at uh, PI Services, is a private detective agency. Uh, he joins us now to unpack this case. Uh, thank you so much for your time this afternoon, Jakob. Now, just give us some of your observations around how law enforcement teams, firstly, are handling this matter, you know, as the search for uh, Jocelyn Smith continues. We know, of course, special units of the police are involved, as well as the SA Navy. Also, just your thoughts of, um, of course, the concern around the prevalence of fake news. Yes, thanks for having me. Well, first of all, it's great having all these teams on board, number one. You know, you don't see it very often. I think um, the police and the community and everyone involved is, is doing their utmost best um, with the situation. And we can clearly see that. They might, look, we don't want to badmouth anyone. We don't want to spread rumors or say anything negative. So, so we are leaving this in the hands of the police force. They are the ones mandated to do this task. And um, the sad thing about this all is to see the fake news being spread, especially on social media. And this is the, the norm today. What we see is people use the social media to do all this, you know, to spread the fake news and to cause a, to cause a sense of, of disarray between the community and the police. Of course, you, you would need to balance the use of social media, right? I mean, it does have its, um, you know, positives. I mean, then how do you do that? How do you balance uh, the use of social media to assist in investigations without compromising on any forensic work or, or any police investigations in general? Because it has been used before that when a child disappears, immediately you will see it um, on some public pa platforms, particularly social media. And that, in a way, does spread the news that this little girl is missing. But what we are seeing now is completely different. Yes. That's why the source is so important. That is why we stick to the sources like the police's Facebook page, you know, the police Twitter page, those kind of pages that gives us the true and correct version of events. You know, um, we should not look at people coming online and making videos ab about what they assume they know. You understand? So mm. we need to stick to media that is trusted and that is trustworthy and that we can go to and say, OK, this is the correct news, this we can use. But we should stay away from these people coming online, looking for sensation, but not actually knowing what is going on. Uh, let's talk now about, you know, how these matters are currently being investigated. We're seeing a lot of people, you know, in this investigation. We've seen also community members in, you know, the supposed areas where she was last seen. We saw, of course, also pieces of clothing that were found um, in the area that uh, seemed to be belonging to a small child. I mean, how should these be treated? Um, there's also, of course, the concern of contaminating the scene where investigators should essentially be the first ones to come to that scene. And yes, quite right, 100 percent. So this is the thing. You look, we don't know if the scene has been contaminated or not. We are not there to see that. But as I do understand, the scene was discovered. The clothing were bagged and it was sent. We know now, up until now, we know that the clothing has been sent to the police um, laboratory for forensic analysis. Um, and that's a good start. At least that process has now began, okay? And with regards to contaminating the scene, that is a concern. You know, this should not happen. And this is why the community needs to be informed about how to treat a crime scene. What should they do when they come across a crime scene? You know, and they need to hand it over immediately to the crime scene specialist to corner off the scene and to collect the evidence as quickly as possible. How, um, you know, dangerous is it for such information to be so prevalently, you know, re re revealed in the public eye, you know, considering that she's still missing and that there is um, a, a perpetrator out there who may or may not have taken her? I mean, how sensitive should particularly law enforcement agencies thread in this particular case? 
Yes, no, most definitely they should have treated us more confidentially. Of course, we want to make the public aware. We do want the public's assistance. Someone could have seen her. Um, someone could have noticed her. Um, so, yes, making the public aware is a good thing. But this is the thing about, you know, making such information available. It, there is a risk where the suspect or suspects in this case can now be aware of certain things and they can now prepare themselves to to mislead the police and to deceive them, you know, in order not to get caught. Mm. And we talked a little bit about, you know, just some of the forces that have bolstered police efforts in, in this particular investigation. The use of canine unit as an example. Uh, just talk to us about the, the importance of it, particularly, uh, you know, a few days leading um, to the disappearance or leading after the disappearance of, of any child for, for that matter. Yeah, well, we know in South Africa, a child goes missing every five hours. So it's such an importance to have a canine unit on board immediately. Take a piece of clothing to the animal or to the dog, let him sniff the clothing, and then release the animal in the vicinity of where the person was last seen. This must be done, they say 24, 48 hours, I say as soon as we can. As soon as we know that a child or someone is missing, get the K9 unit involved immediately. They are still key. Um, so I am not aware or I'm not sure when the K9 was tasked to come on board, but it's a good thing because they can still help. And getting everyone on board and every unit on board is going to be beneficial at the end of the day. I'm sure of that. Yaku, cool. thank you so much for your time this afternoon. Really do appreciate your insights, of course. Yaku cool. van Skalkveik is the owner and managing director at PI Services. That's a private detective agency um, just to unpack and, and, and weigh in on this particular matter as the search for little Jocelyn Smith continues.